A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion my persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will put, be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord. For he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, though one, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, <clears throat> Fear no one, nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor a secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story told about a boy named Tom Brown. Tom was a very popular boy who attended a boarding school in England. He shared a dormitory with 12 other boys, and they all looked up to him. Whatever Tom said, whatever he did, always influenced the conduct of those other 12 boys. And then one day, a new boy came to the boarding school. He was assigned to the same dom uh, dormitory that Tom Brown was in. And that first night, the new boy knelt down by his bed and began to say his night prayers. And as he did so, some of the boys in the dorm began to snicker and laugh at him. One of them even threw his shoe at the new boy. 
That night, Tom Brown did not sleep very well. He began to think about his mother and the prayers that she had taught him to say before going to bed. Prayers that he had stopped saying since he started going to the boarding school. Well, the next night, several of the boys in the dorm were preparing to tease and make fun of this new kid as he was getting ready to kneel to say his prayers. But when bedtime came around, something totally unexpected happened. When the new boy knelt down to pray, so too did Tom Brown. And when the other boys saw what Tom did, they did not carry out their plans to tease and make fun of the new boy. This simple story of Tom Brown is a very powerful illustration of the message of today's gospel. We hear the Lord tell us, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. This simple story also reveals one of the main reasons why it is sometimes hard for us to acknowledge our faith and share it with others. We are afraid of being made fun of. Let us consider today one of the important places where we need to acknowledge our Lord, and that's in our homes, especially with our children. The way parents witness their faith and teach their faith to their children has a very profound effect on that child's religious and moral development and growth. For instance, in the story of Tom Brown, it was his mother's example that caused his conscience to reevaluate what was going on in that dorm. And it led Tom to bear witness to his faith before his peers in that dorm room. Through her example, Tom had the courage to join that new boy in prayer. And this caused his peers to change their minds and not make fun of the new boy. I don't know who it was that wrote, but many years ago, someone once said, every Christian occupies some kind of pulpit and preaches some kind of sermon every day. This is especially true of parents and the example of faith that they hand on to their children. Catholic Digest once ran an article of an interview that they did of a couple who were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. In the interview, the couple shared that they prayed together every night before they went to bed. And that was something they started on their wedding night. When they first started this practice, they began by praying an Our Father or Hail Mary together. But as time went on, they started to read scripture and even reflect upon this passage they had read. Eventually, they started to pray spontaneously from the heart. And sometimes they would ask for God's help for a problem or a concern that they had in their marriage. Each spouse admitted in the interview that praying this way was not easy at first but they were able to overcome their reluctance to pray honestly from the heart because not to do so would be dishonest to God as well as to each other. By being able to pray together, it helped them to get through some very difficult and bumpy patches in their marriage, especially in the first seven years. And how was it that this couple learned to pray together before going to bed? Well, they got the idea from the wife's parents, who used to pray together every night. In fact, the wife remembered that she and her siblings would often join their parents in their bedroom and read scripture together. And that had brought peace and comfort to their family. And she wanted the same thing for her new family. This is the precise kind of Christian witnessing 
that Jesus is talking about in the gospel. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. It is this kind of Christian witness that perhaps is something that we're not used to. But it is precisely this kind of witnessing of faith that Jesus is calling us to do. It is the kind of witness that can change and improve our family relationships in a most powerful and a most productive way. And what keeps us from this kind of prayerful Christian witnessing? It's usually our own fears. Did you notice in that gospel passage that three times Jesus says to his disciples, fear not. Fear is what often keeps us from witnessing our faith to others. Tom Brown overcame his fear of his peers as he recalled his mother's example of prayer and joined the new kid in kneeling and saying prayers before going to bed. Today, Jesus says to us, fear not in giving witness to our faith to others. Jesus wants us to live out our faith, most especially in our families and with our children. <clears throat> so what fear is it that we have to overcome if we are to truly witness our faith? May God give us the courage to truly witness our faith to our children and to our families. <clears throat> our growing in faith question then on this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. How do I witness my faith to others? There are so many ways in which I attempt to witness my faith to others, but I think the most common, the most frequent, is what I'm doing right now. When I share with you my answer to whatever the growing in faith question is, that I try to share my vulnerabilities, my challenges, my weaknesses with you, in the hopes that you can look into your own lives and say, what is it that's going on in my life? And what can I be doing better to be a true follower of Jesus Christ? Faith is not always easy. It can be challenging. And yet, when we try to be faithful to the teachings of Jesus Christ, we know the power and the strength that we receive. And we've experienced moments where that faith has made all the difference in our struggles to be the best that we can be. And so I invite you to continue to look in your lives. Ask yourselves, how have I handed on my faith to my children? How has faith energized and made me a better person? And how can I share that with others? As we reflect upon our efforts and the ways we share faith with others, let us now stand and offer our prayers and needs this day. The Lord is great in his love for us, and he answers our prayers. With confidence, we place before him our needs this day. Today we remember John the Baptist, who proclaimed the coming of the Messiah and repentance for our sins. As we follow John's example, help us to boldly proclaim the good news of our Savior to those around us and hold firm to our witness of religious liberty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all people of the world that this fortnight for freedom may, ins may inspire and encourage all governments to advance and protect religious liberty and justice for all their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Pates, and all the ministers of the church, 
that their preaching and example may encourage the faithful to remain strong in their beliefs as witnesses of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Trevor Chiquin, who was ordained as a priest on Friday. May the Lord fill him with the gift of the Holy Spirit and bless his ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the suffering people in the world, including those who are served by the Peter's Pence Collection, that God will send them a merciful witness of charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially Bob and Marge Kramer, Terry Bloom, for the recovery of Leanne Kanan Cranhagen, the special intentions of this Mass, and for Marianne Eide, sister of Teresa Cruz of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, we pray the prayer for vocations found in the back of our missalettes. O oh, Jesus, good and gentle shepherd, grant that the men and women from our community may have the grace and the courage to hear and answer your call to priesthood and religious life. Give them the wisdom to realize that life is a gift. Let them realize their life is part of your plan. Call forth those you have chosen to spread the gospel message and help them to freely respond to life and service in the church. May the parents and families of our parish support and encourage our young men and women to search for, follow, and answer the call of God in their lives. Amen. And let us be seated now for the preparation of gifts. Our presentation song is number 559, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, number 559.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Receive, O oh Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal Mystery. He accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. and the working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rise and ascendant setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make only these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. As we 
least celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, or the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Michael and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to another a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Psalms number 615, the cry of the poor. Announcements. 
reminder that the Living Faith booklets for the third quarter of the year, July, August, September, are available on the back of the church. We had a pretty good run on the supply last week and probably will run out this weekend, but anyhow, they are available and uh, we appreciate uh, those who make it possible to provide those for f no charge. Next weekend is our monthly food pantry collection. Please bring any food items that uh, you would like to help uh, contribute to the food pantry. We have a very good response even during the summer months, so we thank everybody who supports the uh, food pantry drive each month. I have uh, good news to share with you today. The annual diocesan appeal has finally come to an end and we've gone over the top this past week. Uh, we've received a number of uh, gifts tolling, uh, given us a grand total now of 102% of our goal. And so I'm grateful for those who responded to the letter that was sent out a couple of weeks ago and to all parishioners who contributed to this year's annual diocesan appeal. Thank you very much for your support. The fair trade coffee, tea, and chocolates are being sold in the back of the church. We invite you to purchase those items and we thank you for your ongoing support to the fair trade program. You might notice in the bulletin that there are a couple of days this week in which we will not have daily mass and that's simply because Father here has decided to take what I like to call an escape day or a getaway day. I know some people have asked me about my summer vacation plans and I've had to say I have no plans for this summer. I have no trips in the works, uh, hoping maybe in September to get away for a few days, but I'm not sure where that's all at. So uh, in the meantime, uh, every now and then I might just take a day off and say I have nothing on the calendar and let's, let's enjoy it. So I'm heading out to uh, western Nebraska this afternoon and instead of coming back on Monday night like I usually do, I'm just going to take an extra day. I'll be back late uh, Tuesday afternoon. So, um, and then on Thursday I am fulfilling my pledge that I made to the uh, auction committee. And uh, that will be the day in which we will take care of that uh, item that uh, was purchased uh, back in March at the auction. So I'm looking forward to a whole day on Thursday uh, with a group of guys. And then next week, of course, is the 4th of July holiday. So I'll take both Monday and Tuesday off like most everybody else will be for the holiday. And then that will do it for a few weeks before the next escape day. So that's kind of what's in the works this week in my schedule. And finally, I just wanted to share with you some very good news. Uh, yesterday, I went down to Omaha to see Deacon Jim, and he is considerably better than he was a week ago. In fact, I spent almost a full hour with him. I couldn't shut him up. He kept talking. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Uh, but, but he is uh, back to his ornery self. Uh, he is much, much better. Uh, there is plans that if things go well this week, uh, that he will be coming back home and then resuming therapy at Mirtu. So he does not remember anything that took place at Lakeside Hospital. And I believe it was last Monday uh, that they transferred him from Lakeside to Emanuel Rehab. And uh, they put him hard to work, uh, doing therapy almost nonstop all five days. And they were doing more therapy Saturday morning with him. In fact, uh, when I left, he was getting ready to do speech therapy. And I was thinking, he doesn't need speech therapy. He, he, talked, he talked a whole hour with me. So, uh, but he's doing really well. And he wanted me and Dixie uh, to share with you how grateful they are for all the prayers that you've said for him. Uh, they've paid off, um, and they are very appreciative of all you've done. They thank you for the cards that have been sent. Uh, and you can continue to send cards. Like I said, mail them to his home address here in Harlan, and he will get them. And so we'll keep our fingers crossed that maybe by next weekend uh, he'll be home and then continuing his rehab down at Murtu Hospital. Let us stand and pray. <clears throat> Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Though the Mountains May Fall, number 427. Number 427. <laughs> The mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget? Oh, Father, forsake her child, he will not.
you turn and forsake him, he will never